نحمده ونسلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد so in نور الإيضاح we were doing topic of تحارة من الوضوء so let's see three types of wudu فرض واجب and مستحب فرض when you know you have to do any rituals which are dependent on wudu and what are those things your prayer Quranic recitation by holding the mushaf Tawaf of Kaaba. Okay. Those are the things that you have to have your wudu. Without which is Sajda Tilawat. You have to have your wudu. Okay. Janaza. You have to have your wudu. Any nafil prayer. You have to have your wudu. So it's for to do wudu with those actions. But they are wajib as well. But Tawaf of Holy Kaaba. There's a difference. If you did it without wudu. You have still committed a sin. But lesser of the two. As I mentioned. This is a fiqhi difference. Between fard and wajib in Hanafi school, which is that what is the main difference? The simple difference is fard is established with decisive proofs. And what are the three decisive proofs that you can have? Quranic ayat, hadith mutawatira, massly transmitted hadith, and ijma'i ummah, the consensus of ulama, sahaba, or the fuqaha. Solitary narration is not. Definitive because it could be 90% say 95%, 98%, 99%, but not 100% because there would remain error of misunderstanding, forgetfulness, you know, missing out on the point. That's human tendency to do all of those is going to be there. Whereas when it comes in Quran, there's no point, no way it would be in any way, you know. Speculative. Is that clear? So, for when it comes down from these three sources, wajib, when it has solitary narration, not that strong, but a little bit less, it's still sahih, but a little less. Is that clear? Second difference is, which is the main difference, why do we divide into these two groups when practically you have to carry out your fard and you have to carry out your wajib? If you did not, you have committed major sin. The other difference practically is that if you did not do your fard action, then your action is not, your worship is not completed. Without doing that action, you have to do that action. Whereas with wajib, if you missed it, you can compensate by something. Either by such a sahab in your prayer, or by doing some penalty, paying some penalty in umrah or hajj. That would be compensated. You don't have to do that action which you missed accidentally or unknowingly. So that's another difference. Third difference is aqidah related difference, which is if someone rejects a fard, say that I do not believe in that fard to be fard, then he is outside of the fold of Islam. The person who rejects a wajib is considered a transgressor, a fasir, but not a disbeliever. Do you understand that? For example, in Hanafi school, wearing gold for men is wajib, not for because it has come down from hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is not massly transmitted, which is not mutawatir, but a solitary narration. So it does not come to the level of hundred percent certainty, ninety nine percent yes, sahih hadith. Practically, you will be committing major sin if you wear gold. But if someone says, "I do not believe," Gold, wearing gold is haram. That person would not become kafir. He will be a fasir. But if someone says that I do not believe Zohar to be fard upon me, I don't need to pray five prayers of fard of Zohar or fard of Fajr, any prayer. Unless he's drunk, obviously, you just try to convince him. But if he, he says that I believe and I know what you're saying, but I do not believe it to be fard. That he is outside of the fold of Islam. That's the distinction between fard and wajib. Is that clear? Remember that. That's a very important distinction. All three are the very important distinction. That's why Hanafis have this two-pronged understanding of compulsory action. Either fard or wajib. Other imams put them together as they equate fard and wajib. Anyway. Mustahab. The action which is Recommended and should be done as much as possible, but it's not necessary. So these are the situations. 
if you want to, you are normally fine and clean and nice, but, and you haven't got wudu, and you're going to sleep. Doing wudu at that point is highly recommended. It's a good action to do, to sleep in the state of wudu. When you wake up, first thing you do is your wudu after, you know, stinja or whatever. You broke your wudu and you want to be in the state of wudu all the time. To stay in the state of wudu all the time is mustahab. You have done your wudu, which we all had our wudu. And I hope that you all have your wudu even now. Oh. Then you have done your zuhur and say it's now asa time. So you do a fresh wudu on top of that. That's recommended as well. Provided you have done some good action with that wudu. You did the wudu now and you sat here, but you have not done any good deed which was where wudu was required. Like you haven't recited Quran, you haven't prayed any nafil prayer. Then doing another wudu on top of that is disliked. Now you're wasting water. You have not done any good deed with that wudu we just had. And you still are in that state of wudu. So carry on. Don't do wudu. On top of wudu, you could do wudu after you've done some good action. Okay? To stay in the state of wudu is good, but after you've broken it, then obviously new wudu. So always do some good action with a wudu you have done. After, God forbid, you accidentally backbitten, I hope you would never intentionally do that because you are good people. Backbiting or lying, carrying tales or any sin. After that, should do wudu. It's mustahab. So as to cleanse yourself physically as well as spiritually. Spiritually, Allah tawbah. Ya Allah, astaghfirullah. Allah ki tawbah. Yeah, what's this? Do the tawbah there. Forgiveness. And then physically as well with your wudu. Foul poetry. You can include there foul watching. The sin. Do wudu. Laughing out loud outside of the prayer. This is considered dislike action. Loud laughter among people every so often. What it does? Because the heart to die. The spiritual heart dies with a lot of laughter. That's why it's not considered good thing. If you wash a dead body, doing ghusl after that is mustahab. For each prayer, doing a wudu is mustahab. Mustah I said wudu, yeah? Wudu, not ghusl. After washing the body, wudu. If someone is doing a shari ghusl, then doing wudu before that is mustahab as well. If someone was sexually defiled and they do not want to take bath yet, it is so cold or they want to do in the morning before Fajr, that's fine. At least do wudu before you go to bed. Minimum. Before relationship, good to do wudu. When someone becomes angry and out of you know, control, doing wudu is mustahab. It will cool you down. It will cool your mind down. Make you a human being again. If you were trying to behave like animals. Recitation of Quran, doing a fresh wudu. This is just verbally, not for touching, because then it's wajib. Or for to touch it. So verbally. Even for that, doing wudu is good. Narrating hadith. Imam Malik Rahmatullah would even take ghusl when he's teaching hadith. Always be in the state of wudu. Learning being, being in the state of wudu, even here, be in the state of wudu. Do wudu for this, this reason only. Adhan, iqama, and khutbah. It's mustahab to be to do wudu for them. Visiting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's blessed grave. It's mustahab to do wudu. Staying in the plain of Arafah. Stay in the state of wudu. Between Sa'i 
while you're doing sa'i, stay in the state of wudu. Do the wudu for that. The camel meat, because of difference of opinion, some imam would consider camel meat to be the nullifier of wudu. In a Hanafi school, it is not a nullifier. And yet, to avoid that difference, if you do your wudu, that's better. Likewise, touching the female member of the family, a baligha. So you had your wudu, you shook hand with your mom, your wudu is gone, according to Imam Shafi. Not according to Hanifa. You don't have to have wudu, but it's good in order to avoid that difference. Okay. Likewise, anything that other Imam would consider a nullifier of the wudu, you did it, and then you did your wudu, although your wudu is not broken according to Hanafi school, but do it in order to get some reward. And when it is makru to perform wudu, while you are still in the state of wudu, and you haven't done any good deed with that, And it is haram to do wudu when you are already in the state of wudu from the water which is of waqf, donated water, not your water, from the masjid, from the madrasa. Then you are abusing that water. It is haram to use that water if you are already in the state of wudu. A waqf water, the water that we have in the masjid, it is only for people who are in need of that water. For you to just, ah, let me just get a fresh wudu. Don't do that. In fact, I would recommend that you never ever use the wudu of masjid. Uh, water of masjid for your wudu. Or water for toilet. Unless you're in desperate need. That's a different thing. It is only for desperate situations. Only for those people who haven't got access to water. It's only for travelers. It's a charity money. But some people have this bad habit. They only do wudu in the masjid. And they waste water there because they don't have to pay bill. They will be bill belying on the day of judgment. Don't use that. Do wudu at home. And do wudu from the minimum water that you could use. The Sallallahu would do wudu with one glass only. And with four glass, also. Yes. Difficult task. But wudu, you definitely can do with one glass. Very easily done. Learn to do that. May Allah give us tawfiq. MashaAllah. Any question? 